Welcome back to Ideology Explained. This time we're talking about free markets, which aren't technically an ideology either, just like the last topic. And no, neither the market nor the planned economy are ideologies. Don't get me wrong, they're featured in ideologies, but they themselves are not ideologies. Just like the police force. It exists in some ideologies and not in others, but that doesn't make it itself an ideology. Anyways, let's start. Markets are a system of distribution used to move resources. The market does not affect on what conditions the products are made. We are used to thinking about the market as part of capitalism and right now it definitely is. But you could just as much have a socialist economy with the market. It's called market socialism and it basically means giving the means of production to the workers but leaving the markets in place. Some want to keep it forever and others want it to only be in place for a transition period until another system is established. Something I have heard in Terry Eagleton's book titled Why Marx Was Right would be an AI planned economy for all necessities and a free market on top of that for all luxury products. For the sake of completion, let's now go over how the market works. A market is completely decentralized and the distributing actors do not directly communicate with each other. Rather, they have a look at as many transactions as possible, work out the prices of a lot of products and by what has the highest price in a certain place, they decide what to sell and where to sell it. But wait, how do the prices change at all? That's supply and demand. When more people want a product than there are products available, the people owning or selling the product notice that and increase the price, which then encourages people to produce more. And if it, there are enough resources around, the people making or selling the products have to somehow encourage people to buy their product instead. They do that via innovation and increased productivity, which allows them to sell a cheaper product, which more people will buy. The free market has complicated roots and it has been around in some form forever, and by that I mean people trading stuff. It was refined and popularized by Adam Smith in the 1770s and has since been adopted by practically every country on earth. After the theory and the history, this is the point of the video where I go over the disadvantages of the market. Taking how the market has been in place for the past 200-ish years, there are quite a few examples of that. Please don't take me mentioning all of the faults as biased. It's just that it's easy to see flaws in a system that's everywhere around you. One big flaw is the indirect communication. The people who need a resource, like food, have no way of directly telling the producers that they need more. And they have to rely on the prices rising and the producer noticing it. Nowadays there are market analysis for that. They only exist because the market doesn't allow direct communication between the consumers and the producers, which is an inefficiency in my mind. Talking about inefficiency, the free market wastes a lot of resources on competition and as luck would have it, I have an entire video on that so go watch that. There is also the problem that while yes the market is supposed to cause innovation via competition, it does not actually do that. And yes I've made a whole video on that one as well. Then there is the fact that the market causes monopolies. Just a simple act of competition ensures that. Anarcho-capitalists like to blame the state for that, but hear me out. We have two businesses competing and one is winning, meaning that they have a better product or a cheaper product. Eventually, the other one will go bankrupt and the first one will notice that there are now a bunch of new customers to be had, so they expand and now we have a business twice the size. Next step is it does that again and again and again until only one business remains, a total monopoly. And of course the people in charge of the monopoly will then become a lot richer than anyone else, which causes wealth inequality. Our world has gold plated $100 pizzas and millions of people starving. And the fact that we have both of those displays that inequality and that's not a good sign. There are more problems with the markets, but if I tried to list them all, we'd be here forever. And I am sure I will make videos talking about all of those in the future. So subscribe or something like that. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. See ya.